On every single cruise I've been on, I've seen people who are just really stressed out. They're tripping over their bags, they've lost things, they're missing out on stuff that I know that they would really enjoy if they just knew more. I've been cruising since I was 11 and every mistake in this video I've seen real people make. I've seen the outcomes of the people making these mistakes and I've also learned how to avoid doing them. I took a cruise a couple of years ago and I went to the reception desk. I think I was there just to change my cruise card. My cruise card stopped working so I needed a new one. Nothing dramatic on my end. There was a lady there who was being very, very dramatic. I noticed her, everybody else in the line noticed her because she was really making a big scene. And when somebody is being so loud and so angry, you wanna find out what they're so upset about. She was actually taken to the side to stop her from disrupting everybody else, but I was listening into the conversation. Conversation. This woman was so incredibly angry because she had booked an inside cabin on this cruise, she had shown up to the cruise and she said that the cabin was smaller than any inside cabin she had ever seen before and she demanded an upgrade to a bigger room. She didn't ask for an upgrade or ask if she could pay to upgrade herself, she demanded an upgrade because the cabin was smaller than any cabin she had ever seen before. All of the information about the cabin size is available on the Cruise Line's website before the cruise and generally speaking pretty much much every inside cabin that I've ever stayed on on any cruise ship is the same size. There's not too much variety there. We were all in the line there hoping that this woman wouldn't be an upgrade because that would be very annoying if this woman got an upgrade just for being ignorant and for being so incredibly loud. Happy to say that she did not get an upgrade. I'm not saying that you watching this will act like this and have this type of problem with your cabin, but not properly researching the cabin that you're booking before going on your cruise is a big problem. And I've seen so many people come up against difficulties because of this. A common one that I see quite often is that somebody will book a cabin for three and they will assume that that's a double bed, twin bed, plus a sofa bed. And quite often that is a Pullman bed, like a bunk bed that comes out of the ceiling. You need to know things like that ahead of time because if you're somebody who can't climb up into a ladder, I have personally stayed in those bunk bed things before and they're fine, but if you have any kinds of mobility problems, you're not gonna wanna be climbing down a ladder in the middle of the night to go to the bathroom. That's it. No, you're not gonna wanna do that. Another cruise ship where people often have surprises when it comes to the cabin is the Norwegian Epic. I've cruised on the Norwegian Epic and I had no problem with the unique bathroom design, but a lot of people hate it. On board the Norwegian Epic, you will find a toilet in a little room in one corner of the cabin and a shower in a little room in the other corner of the cabin. The sink is in the main room and there is a curtain there for privacy. I cruised with my brother, had no problem with this design at all, but I know a lot of people who really don't like it. Whenever you're about to book a cruise, when you've got your finger hovering over that book button, I would recommend just doing a quick YouTube search, a quick Google search, or speaking to your agent and asking them what you're actually booking for that price. It's not as simple as just an inside, outside, and balcony cabin. There are some varieties, so make sure you just know what you're booking ahead of time. The good thing is that you cannot get a obstructed view cabin unless you specifically book that. I do recommend that people have a look at obstructed view cabins because it's a brilliant way to save money. But if you haven't booked that, you're not gonna get that. So the stuff that you need to be prepared for is really just what's within your cabin. Occasionally you'll get cabins that have, you know, a sideways layout or something slightly different. A good agent worth their weight in gold because they will know this stuff. The next mistake is a very common one and I've been on cruises with friends who have made this mistake. I think I may have made this mistake at some point too and that is bringing things that you're not allowed to bring on a cruise. I think everybody knows that you cannot bring a gun, you cannot bring fireworks, but there's a lot of things that you can't bring that if you've never been on a cruise before, you would never know. A big one that catches a lot of people out is alcohol. Most cruise lines will have their own alcohol rules about how much per person you can bring on the cruise, if any. And if you go over that or bring something you're not allowed to bring, it will just be confiscated and given back to you at the end of the cruise. Not a huge deal, but you've just wasted space in your suitcase, so definitely avoid that. I had a friend who booked their first cruise. They booked a Cunard cruise, which is a very formal cruise. They were packing their suits and dresses and everything you need for a Cunard cruise. And they thought that it would be okay to just pack an iron in their suitcase. If you're somebody who's been on a cruise before, as soon as I say pack an iron, you're probably thinking, no, don't pack an iron. You can't pack an iron on a cruise. But if you're a first time cruiser, why would you know that? It makes sense that you're not gonna wanna have wrinkles in your clothes. And most of us iron our clothes to get the wrinkles out. 
You cannot do that on a cruise because it is a fire safety risk. They will confiscate that iron from you. If you're lucky, they will just confiscate the iron, keep it and give it back at the end of the cruise. But if you're unlucky, it can mean that your bag can be delayed and it won't be in your cabin until later in the day because they're going through. They may even call you down to check to see what you've packed, which can just delay your cruise. The last thing you want when you finally got on board your cruise is to spend time talking to people about the fact that you've packed a travel iron. Don't pack a travel iron. This did really take my friends by surprise. It's just not a thing that had crossed their mind and I totally understand that. If you do have dresses and formal wear that you need to get the creases out of, it can be kind of tricky on a cruise. What I like to do is just put a dress on a coat hanger. Then when I have a shower, just leave it in the bathroom and the creases normally fall out. You can get special kind of sprays that drop out the creases. And on some cruise lines, they will have a self-service laundry where you can just go and iron your clothes and come back. If they don't have any self-service laundry like that, you would need to pay somebody to iron your clothes for you. That's not a thing that I would ever really want to do. It's quite expensive, but some people do it. And maybe, maybe it's for you, not for me. Maybe it's for you though. If you're ever in doubt about if you can take something on a cruise, just have a quick Google search before you go on the cruise because there's some really weird things on the do not bring on a cruise list. You obviously can't bring anything that's a fire risk, so you can't bring candles, anything like that. The only thing that you can bring that has like a heated plate is a hair straightener or a hair curler. Hair straighteners and hair curlers are okay, but anything else pretty much that heats up like an iron, you're not allowed that. You're also not allowed to bring anything that would help you kind of to cause a crime. You can't bring any handcuffs, anything like that. And you also can't bring things like bleach or paint, anything that could damage the ship. A few years ago, I took a cruise with a person who was a first time cruiser. We took a British Isles cruise, a cruise around the UK. We are from the UK and that's probably why this mistake happened. Most cruise ships will have plug sockets that are US or EU plug sockets. And my friend, rightly so, just thought I'm going on a cruise around the UK, from the UK. Why would I need travel adapters? I'm not going abroad. You definitely need travel adapters. My friend got on board, went to the cabin and sent me a message saying, oh, I can't charge anything. I don't have any adapters. Luckily, I had some spares. I always have loads of travel adapters, but don't put yourself in that situation. Even if you're doing a British Isles cruise, it's very, very, very rare to find UK plug sockets in cruise ships. It's almost always US and EU plug sockets. You could buy a travel adapter from the shop on board the cruise ship if the shop is open, but be prepared to pay, you know, 10 times what you might pay at home. I normally just get my travel adapters from Poundland. Your Britishism of the week is Poundland. I get a lot of comments whenever I say Poundland. People say that it sounds very rude, but Poundland is basically just our version of dollar store or dollar tree or whatever you have in your country. The difference is though, is you can go into Poundland with a pound and that means you can buy one thing because it's Poundland and all taxes and fees and everything are just included in the price in the UK and really in the rest of the world. We do talk a lot more about packing in my cruise course, how to cruise for less. But basically the only essentials you need for a cruise are your passport, your phone, some access to money. If you have those three things, you can work out everything else. I would definitely recommend adapters, seasickness pills, and any kind of paperwork that you may need. But as long as you have some access to money, some proof of who you are with your passport, most other things you can work them out. Money it tends to solve most problems. Don't even get me started on all of the people that say that you need to bring your own pillows, you need to bring your own coat hangers, you need to bring your own towels. You don't need to bring any of that stuff. I see a lot of first time cruisers who will, you know, read a post on the internet that says that you need to bring your own coat hangers and they take that literally as in you need to. You definitely do not need to. I'd recommend bringing some clothes too, of course. I forgot that in my earlier list, but it doesn't have to be that complicated. A big percentage of the cruise mistakes that I see relate to booking a cabin. Watch this video next to learn how to save money on your cabin without actually downgrading the category. You don't have to miss out just because you're on a budget. Watch this next.